Hello and welcome to this, the second episode of the peer-to-peer -peer interview for SHP Online. I'm today with Sarah McConey of the McConey Agency, a business-to-business -business public relations company which was set up by Sarah in 1990. Hopefully we'll have a discussion about what Sarah's thoughts and insights are into the world of health and safety. Welcome Sarah. Sarah, I'd be interested to know how you believe health and safety is viewed by the general public, you know, in the current days. Do you actually think it's getting more positive? I think there's probably two different strands of thought process with the general public. I think if it affects them um, in their sort of home life and things like their bonfire parties cancelled because of health and safety, I would imagine they find it really irritating. But I think if people are being exposed to health and safety within the workplace, they understand the value of it and they're much more happy to embrace it. I think there's a real disconnect between what goes on in our everyday lives and what goes on in our workplace. And we've really got to try and get those two to marry up and, and work better together. Do you think that's down to the adverse publicity that we continually yeah. still find ourselves getting? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the Daily Mail stories, the health and safety stories, they're not, they're not helpful, are they? And I think the HSE is doing quite a strong job in trying to you know, get rid of them through the Mythbuster panel. But nevertheless, there's, we've really got to try and put the positive spin on or the positive story on all of this. We don't want the general public to carry on thinking that it's there to stop them doing things because it's not. It's there to make people healthier, safer and enjoy life more. Sarah, obviously, to bear in mind what you said, you work with an awful lot of high-profile mm. organisations from within and outside of the industry. Do you think they're really making the most of, you know, advertising the proud fact of what we do with regards to our records? Fatalities are going down, accidents are going down. Do we really promote the positives enough? Um, I think there's a real effort by a lot of organisations to try and get the positive message out there. The, the problem that we have is the figures don't change that much year on year. You know, the, the fatality numbers are coming down, which is fantastic. The, the health figures are not coming down, they're not moving at all, but the figures become difficult to talk about because they don't change very much and people get very blasé about figures. I think there are a lot of um, attempts now by organisations to introduce campaigns to try and engage the general public and the industries in um, embracing health and safety. IOSH has just launched their uh, No Time to Lose campaign all around occupational cancers, which is going to be really powerful, I'm sure. And of course, last uh, in, in June in 2014, we launched Health and Safety Week, which is really designed to try and get people to understand the, the benefits of health and safety and the positive bits that it brings and celebrate our success and celebrate the people who are working in the profession so hard to have an impact. I take that on board, but is there still an apprehension from some of the larger businesses to promote the fact that they're actually doing really, really good things with health and safety? Is there an aspect of, I'd rather stay below the radar because it may get too dangerous if I start promoting the good things? Yeah, and they may be thinking, oh, it might imply that previously they've had a bad record. I think if they can demonstrate that their record is really positive now and that the business as a result of that is, is, is get, getting some fantastic results and the staff are engaged and um, you know, feel really protected at work, then it is a good story. I mean, you know, we all know good safety equals good business and it's usually a good business that's operating a good safety and health regime that will have good profits. It's a good opportunity to promote the CSR side of their business. And I, I really, of course, I'm going to say they should, but I really believe they should. Sarah, I hear an awful lot at the moment about whether it should be health and safety, should it be safety and health, and you know, does the health really get the right amount of focus? What are your thoughts on whether we should rebrand health and safety? It's being discussed an awful lot at the moment. I'm, I'm really not sure that rebranding is the way to go. I think the key here is more about finding ways to engage with the audiences the way they want to be engaged with, using the new social channels, this, you know, doing more social media, social marketing, to find ways to get through to the people about the benefits of health and safety. Um, look at some of the campaigns that have been quite successful over the years. So for example, the five a day campaign. 10 years ago, we would never have understood the value of eating five lots of fruit and veg a day, but now people generally understand that and try and incorporate it. You know, that's a sort of, that's a classic social campaign that's worked, but it was a, a different approach to different audiences. And I think health and safety is no different. We've just got to find a more exciting way to engage with the audience. 
I mean, it's interesting there, it brings me on to the next question nicely. You mentioned about the need for communication. Mm. You know, the young people that are coming through now, I think Snodgrass referred to them as the Generation Z. There is a huge challenge with young people that's coming through, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Do you think we have to up our game with regards to the communication? I think we do, Gerard, you and I do. People of our genre, our age... Still young enough. Uh, well, yeah, but I think, you know, the young ones are all there. They're communicating through the social channels. It's going to be the way the world goes, but people are still going to want to read something from a book, read something from a magazine. I think the important thing is telling the story across the different uh, ch channels so that you get the message slightly differently depending on your audience. If we're talking to young people, we've got to talk in, an, in a way that they like, that they engage with. But if we're talking to an academic, we've got to talk to them in the way they like and engage with. So it's telling the story, but in a different way and using all the different channels of communication to their best. Sarah, it's been my great pleasure to interview you for the second episode of the SHP Online and getting your insight into the world of health and safety for the future. Thank you. Thanks, Gerald.